Our guest today is well known to many of us as a creator of some popular comic strips, Ricochet and Latigo, and some well-researched and well-written Western novels. Born and raised on the Crow Indian Reservation in southeastern Montana, Stan Line has earned many honors, having been listed in Who's Who in America, having received the Montana Governor's Award for the Arts, and having a long list of other achievements. Stan was the 2009 winner of the Western Writers of America's prestigious Spur Award for his audiobooks, Vendetta Canyon, and To Kill a Copper King. And not only that, he's a real man because he knows how to wear pink. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So we're so happy to <clears throat> welcome Stan Line today. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Very good to see you, Michelle. Good to see you, too. It's looking good. I always tell Stan I think he's a cross between hip shot percussion and ricochet. And now he says maybe just a little Merle Fanshawe <laughs> thrown in there, too. So. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Mostly the nice guy, though. Mostly yeah. ricochet. So I think we all have our alter egos, and hip shot's a little bit of my dark side and, uh, and my heritage, but, but probably Rick and Merlin even more than Rick, I think. So. Wonderful. We'll let you tell us a little more about sure. Merlin pretty soon, sure. but I, we'd like a little a background about yourself and where you grew up. And grew up in Lodgegrass, Montana. Uh, my dad was a sheep man <clears throat> on the reservation down there, and he ran uh, 13,000 sheep in oh my gosh. 1947, so it was really open range country then. And I grew up around these old time cowboys that uh, I, I just idolized. I, uh, during summers and so forth, I wasn't around uh, children, other kids very much, so I, they became my playmates and I, I pestered them unmercifully. But they also <laughs> became my heroes and uh, uh, every, all my work has been Western in nature ever since. Yeah, it has. It has. It's a wonderful work. And what made you and Linda choose Helena? How did you end up in our our community here? Um, as they say, Montana is a, a small town with long streets, and I have lived in most of the neighborhoods. <laughs> um, we were we met in uh, Roberts, Montana, and uh, uh, then moved to Billings during the cattle drive of 1989. Uh, we built a house or bought a house on the Rim Rocks, and. Uh, in 1990, the house burned to the ground. Mm -hmm. So we moved to the Flathead briefly, uh, and then found that we didn't. We, we've always liked Helena. I always did, and Linda did too. So we moved back from there about uh, 16 years ago or so, and uh, we just love Helena. We've been here since then. We like it for many reasons, but partly for its location. It's central to nearly everything in Montana, and when you're way east or way up in the Flathead, you're kind of a long way from the rest of the state. But here yeah. we're really central. It's a big state, and it takes a long time to get somewhere. If that's you're, true. If you're that's in, in the hinterlands, yeah. yeah, that's right. And Helena is pretty central. Mm -hmm. So you have a long history with the the Wild West and writing things sure. about the Wild West. So talk about the the comic strips first, because well, sure. they're dear to <coughs> lots of the hearts of lots of people. Uh, Ricochet began. I went back to New York after the Navy and uh, <coughs> starved for a while in Greenwich Village. It was a starving artist, a typical one. And uh, finally got a job uh, as, at the Wall Street Journal as a typist, uh -huh. and later worked on worked up to reporter at the Journal, going to art school at night on the GI Bill. And uh, in 1957, I submitted. I, I got the idea for Ricochet in '57, and and drew it up, submitted it to several feature syndicates, including um, I think about 13, and I got about 12 rejections. Uh -oh. but, one of them, they? but one they of them picked know. it up. It's a good thing when they saw <laughs> it, did they? <laughs> right. So uh, it started in 1958 uh, with about 30 some papers, and it grew to uh, a readership of about 15 million people a day over the years. And I did Ricochet for 20 years. I think every paper in Montana carried it for most of its uh, most of those 20 years. And then, uh, after losing custody of the strip, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, in, a co in a contract uh, settlement, uh, I was, was asked by another syndicate to do Latigo. Mm -hmm. And I began that in 1979, and it ran till 1983. So those were the two comic strips. And then, uh, after that, we did some oh, cartoons for weekly papers, a cartoon called Grassroots. And, uh, I remember that one, too. Um, I've always been a fan, Stan. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, Linda was too, and from the first, she read, when we first met each other, she read one of my treatments, it was a film treatment called Chinook, which was a, a Western, 
and she said, you have got to write. And mm -hmm. so she has uh, been the wind beneath my wings for a long time, and, and I've been writing uh, uh, novels since uh, probably about 1995. Well, that Starting was going to be my uh, question. Marshall of Medicine yeah. Creek, right? Uh, yeah, Medicine Lodge. Right. Medicine Lodge, right. And that was sort of based on Lodge Grass. It was a fictionalized name for Lodge Grass. Just called it Medicine Lodge, which uh, is pretty close. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of Merlin Fanshawe. The very first <laughs> one was called The Bodacious Kid. Okay. I uh, love that, that name. <laughs> I love that. I did well, too. Well, tell us about the character of Merlin. <laughs> he, uh, <clears throat> the book starts when he's about, a fifth, well, he's about 15 or 16 years old. Uh, he's just lost his father. He's orphaned. And he becomes involved with a charismatic outlaw leader named Original George Starkweather and a, uh, a two different lawmen and one pretty girl, all of whom have their own agenda for Merlin. And, uh, <laughs> and he has to work his way through this moral minefield and uh, come out his own man on the other side. We, we've all had that little... Um, <laughs> <laughs> own agenda project with other people too. That's true. Yeah, that's that's a life life lesson. Very true. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. And so, uh, tell us more about your more recent writings. Uh, the the books uh, there there are seven of them in the Merlin Fanshaw series so far. <clears throat> I'm just finishing the eighth one, which is called The Big Open, and mm. that will be out this summer. Uh, but uh, they they just each each one is a year in the life of, of Merlin Fanshawe. It it talks about something that happens in that year. We're up to uh, um, 19 or 1889 now, which is the year of our statehood. And what is he now? About 23. About 26 or so 26? now. So he's getting older, you know, like, <laughs> like all of us. Oh yeah, really. He's got a ways to go. <laughs> I was say, I think Except you, ladies, you don't age at all. No, we oh, don't. Well, thank you. So you're charming, and we can give that credit to Linda, your wife, I'm sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, that's great. That means he has a lot of life left to live. So yes, there will does. be more books on the horizon. That's right. Yeah, it's probably as far people have, have really become uh, enamored of, of Merlin, and they they keep waiting for his next adventure, his next book. So, uh, for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be with writing Merlin from here on out. Oh well, yeah, that would be great. Well, I love the titles that you come up with. This this one to kill a copper king. Tell us about that one. That was fun. I've always Butte is one of the favorite places in in my whole life. I just I just love the city and I love the people and their uh, the resilience and their strength, and they're just wonderful, honest, open people. And they've been through a lot of trouble. Uh, the book is set in a, in a time when Marcus uh, Daly and uh, the Copper Kings were in sway in Butte, and there is a as a hit a hit person has been hired to kill Marcus Daly and Merlin as Deputy United States Marshal is sent to find this killer and to prevent the assassination of Daly. So the entire book is about is about that and on that theme. Okay. So you're all of the Merlin Fanshawe books are set in different areas, different places? Pretty much. Uh, his hometown is a fictional place called Dry Creek, Montana. And uh, some of it. I thought there was a place called. Dry oh, there's several. <laughs> <laughs> I think there must be five or six dry creeks at least in Montana, <laughs> and I chose it for that reason. Uh, I think Dry Creek is one of the more common names. Rock Creek is another very common name in right. Montana. So, uh, it could be anybody's dry creek. There are dry creeks in Arizona and uh, Texas and elsewhere too. Okay. Now Ricochet, we had a, a the hometown or the town of the strip was. Conniption. So I love that. <laughs> I mean, Stan, that's part of the charm of all of your writings and your scripts, and are the the fabulous names that you came up with, mm -hmm. like uh, Bell Star for the cat. And that's right. I mean, <laughs> well, there's a story behind that too. Bell Star showed up as a stray on Hipshot's doorstep one night, and he brought the cat in. Cats adopt people, as you know. Yes. Hmm. Not the other way around. And uh, <laughs> Bell did that. And at first, Hipshot called uh, the cat. Wild Bill, until she had a litter of kittens, uh -uh. and then he decided he had to change the name to Bell Star. <laughs> <laughs> <That's cute. laughs> of course, everybody's favorite comic strip is is just one 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 frame, and mm. it's hip shot percussion on Christmas morning, right? right? Oh. On Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas Eve. And he's out on a snowy hilltop, uh, talking to uh, the creator, which he calls the boss, and he says, "Happy birthday, boss." Yeah, that's that's yeah. probably everybody's favorite of all yes, time, it isn't is. it? 
Yeah, that's yeah. the hands down the, the most The one that you get favorite. ordered the most. And Very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, the award that you won in 2009, the Western Writers of America Prestigious mm -hmm. Spur Award, how did that come about and, and what does that encompass? Um, it's, it's like uh, the Edgar and some of these for mysteries, but the genre, uh, the Western genre, it's one of the oldest awards in, of all the uh, literary awards. And uh, it's very rarely won. And the, yeah. uh, the editor of, of, the, of the audio books that I work with submitted that one to the Western writers. And they chose it the winner. I've been a Spur Award finalist twice before. And he called me and said, Stan, he said, you have been a bridesmaid twice. He said, but this time you're a bride. You get to be the bride. So Linda and I went to Oklahoma City for the awards and, uh, and received that one. Well, you put together a Western Writers uh, con Conference here in Helena. We did. That was my mm, first one, ago. and that was great. We, you remember that. that I was, do. People, people loved it. Do you plan to do another one? Uh, <laughs> There's they, a lot of work. They pick a, a, a different place each year, the Western oh. Writers do. Usually some place in the West. This year it's Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, okay. so. Well, I thought it was a, quite a coup for you to pull it off having it in mm -hmm. Helena. Right. Richard yeah. Wheeler was involved in that and uh, um, some of the other writers here, Kay Cheatham and, uh, and myself. And, and of course, even people who don't live in Helena probably recognize you and your white hat from um, being the host at the Western Rendezvous. Right. That's true. For many years. I did that for many years. Yes. This is, in fact, this is my first year I haven't been involved. So, so you retired from that? Last uh, year. That duty, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, when you and Judy worked on that for oh, many years. for a years. long time, you bet. Yeah, we We're, did. Yeah. yeah. It was a great time. Yeah, it was it's good, a wonderful good times. event. Yep. Now the Historical Society is doing it, and they're mm -hmm. doing a nice job. They really are. Yeah, yeah. They really are. So we don't know who will be the MC this year. Or do no, we? I don't. I, I yeah. haven't heard that. I, I received the card talking or showing them. You know, I, yeah, I got one in the mail, too. That means they're going to have the party, right? That's right. We just get to go <laughs> and enjoy ourselves. Yeah. We and love I, the party. I talked to John Bacchus, and I guess they're going to have the quick draw out there again. The so. branch, yeah. And we'll miss Jean. Yes, we will. Sure. Certainly will. Oh, what yeah, a great lady definitely. she was. Yes, she was. Well, um, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about that we haven't touched on that's Exciting. Just to like to mention, most of our work now is going online, and uh, mm. so I would like to mention my, my website and my blog site, if that would be okay. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Please do. I'm at uh, stanline.net is the website. Maybe Jeannie can type that in for us. <laughs> yeah, just stanline.net, and then the, uh, uh, the blog site is stanlineauthor.com. Okay. So, so those think, are the two. And I've gone to look at both of those, and right. they're very well done. Who pulled that one off? Uh, we did, Linda and I, and uh, <laughs> we have a techie who, in back in Alabama who's been helping us. Oh, we well, love techies. Huh. Everybody oh, needs a techie, don't you? Oh, we love techies. <laughs> right. I, I call them nerds, but I think nerds are some nerds people, rule the Some rule people call them world. grandchildren. You know? Yeah, well, that, <laughs> right. If you can't figure out how to do it, get a 12-year-old. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your kids and your grandkids. Oh, my, and uh, I know you have, a, you have a son over in Great Falls. I'll, get it, I'll get it wrong if I... I I have, okay. <laughs> I have six sons no. oh my and gosh. one daughter, and uh, in our blended family, Linda has two sons. So, and I'll get this wrong, but I think we have 15 grandchildren now. Oh my goodness! Holy so. smokes! And two of them, um, two of my sons are, are cur close by. Matt is a lieutenant colonel with the National Guard. Mm -hmm. He flies F-15s now. He's a hero. <laughs> yes, and my son Taylor is a is an artist, a painter, yes, he is. and he's yes. in, he lives in Townsend. He's I've one of my Facebook friends, so oh, I see that's his great. work all the time. He's yep. doing his a lot online, too. Good. He is. He yeah. sells a lot online. He shows them on Facebook, and then um, much of, most of his sales are over eBay. Auctions. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He paints with Josh Elliott. They're close friends. And oh, yes, Josh is a wonderful <laughs> He paints artist. beautifully. He, yep. he really does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah. does. Really nice. Well, there you go. You, you've raised your children to be individuals. Very true, yeah. And yeah. Uh, where are the rest of them? Uh, one is in Texas, uh, and uh, two are down, down in the Billings and uh, Red Lodge area. Mark nice. and Rich are down there. Um, I have a daughter who is also in Texas. So. Okay, I didn't realize you had six sons. That, so that would be seven children with a daughter, That's true, right? yeah. And then two <sighs> with Linda's blended family. That right. gives you... A whole parcel of people. That's true, and they're both <laughs> in Washington State, and uh, and the grandchildren 